Welcome to the house of the Lord. I'm Pastor David Rose now. God bless our time in this word. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll offer a confession and invite you to join together with me. We we'll confess our sins and then receive assurance of our Lord's forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart in what I have done and left undone. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy, O God. Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent his Son to die for all. For his sake, God forgives our sins and calls us from darkness into his marvelous light. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message on this Holy Thursday is recorded in Luke chapter 22. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it, they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The word of our God. I'll add a short prayer for the Lord to help focus our thoughts and our attention on the good he has for us in this message. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain, let me your child and heir remain. Amen. Outside the walls of an upper room in Jerusalem, the enemies of Jesus are getting ready. The chief priests and teachers of the law, as they have for the past three years, want Jesus dead. They saw, they heard the crowds of people, how many people shouted out his praises on Sunday, just the Sunday before as he entered into Jerusalem. So they were hesitant to arrest him. They were afraid because of the crowds, many who thought that Jesus was a prophet. But this night was different. This night was different because they had one of Jesus' own disciples on their payroll who had agreed to betray him. The next 24 hours would be filled with treachery as their plan and without them realizing it was also and at the same time all along God's plan unfolded. Soon the mob would arrest Jesus in the garden. The trials would begin before Annas, Caiaphas, Pilate, Herod, Back to Pilate again. The crucifixion, 
his death, placing his dead body in the tomb. All of that and so much more was coming. But for a few hours in this upper room, it's just Jesus and his disciples. And how he longed to eat this meal with them. Jesus enjoyed spending time with his disciples. For the past three years, we know that he took time to be alone with his disciples, to pray, to teach them, to strengthen them, to refresh them, to prepare them. Tonight would be more precious than they could ever know. Tonight they've gathered to celebrate the Passover, to remember the night the Lord rescued the Israelites from their bondage to slavery in Egypt. On that night, the Lord said he would strike down every firstborn male of man and animal in every house throughout the land. But he also commanded his people to celebrate a special meal that night. They were to slaughter a male lamb without blemish, without defect, and paint the blood on the door frames of their houses. Destruction would come to every house in Egypt from the firstborn son of Pharaoh to the firstborn son of the lowest slave. But the Lord would pass over the houses of the Israelites. The blood of the lamb would keep them safe. God wanted his people to celebrate that meal Every year after that, it was an opportunity to look back and remember what God had done. But it was also an opportunity to look ahead. That lamb without blemish, without defect, was a picture of the perfect lamb of God, the Messiah, the Christ, who would be the sacrifice for God's people. His blood would protect them from God's wrath. He would set them free from slavery to sin and to death. God's people have been celebrating that special meal for more than a thousand years. But that night was different. That night, the Lamb of God was in the flesh and in that room. And he was about to institute something that had never been seen at any of those other Passover meals. On that night, for the first time, Jesus promised his real body and his real blood that he would give over into death the next day. On this night, Jesus gives a down payment on that new covenant, the new pact that God will make with sinners, a promise of the forgiveness of all their sins sealed with his blood shed on the cross. In this room, Jesus institutes a meal that will be celebrated not only every year, but countless numbers of times in every year that's been celebrated for the past 2,000 years and counting. In this meal, Jesus gives his disciples something to strengthen them for the dreadful days ahead and for the difficult days of their ministries that they will carry out for the rest of their lives. No wonder Jesus eagerly desired to eat this meal with them before he suffers. And we must know how eager he was for what he knew would come after. Jesus told his disciples that he would not eat this meal again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. He also said that he would not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. What did he mean by that? The kingdom of God is his rule in grace over all believers and in glory for eternity. The prophets of the Old Testament and Jesus both spoke about this blessed relationship between God and his people as a festive fellowship meal in his kingdom. This communion is made possible only by Jesus' perfect life and innocent death And it also looks forward to what the Bible describes as a heavenly banquet, an eternal feast of peace and joy where no enemies will be lurking outside, no enemies will be inside. It will be only God and his people forever. How we long to take our place with him at that table and enjoy that meal. Because the only life we know now is a life where we are 
surrounded by enemies. So many people that we see and hear and read about every day are still putting God on trial, God and all who believe in him. So many do not honor God's word. They teach children anything and everything but what God's word says and how he says he wants all to live. And behind all of that is our greatest enemy, the devil. He has his troops, his evil forces who are always prowling, ready to pounce. As if our sinful nature that causes us so much trouble is not enough, hostile forces scheme and conspire all around us. And that's why it is so good for us to be here in this room, in God's house, and to gather with God's people. And not that we don't bring sin in here with us. If the doors of this humble little house of God that I walk through to be here for every service, if the doors to the place where you are gathered right now were some kind of special doors that would not allow sin to pass through them, then this building that I'm in right now and where you are right now would be completely empty if it blocked out all sin from coming into it. Where there are sinners... There is sin. Sin was in that upper room too. In the hearts of all 12 of Jesus' disciples, including the one that would betray him. We drag our guilt each time we gather. Our guilt for all the many times that we have been far too easy prey for our greatest enemy. And didn't even make it hard for him. We need to be here in this room to be assured that Jesus is present with us, to have him remind us that his blood covers over our sins and causes God's wrath to pass over us too. Here he reminds us that the kingdom still belongs to him. He rules in power over all things, And that means over all enemies. Here Jesus speaks to our hearts through his word as though we were gathered at the same table. And as unbelievable as this can seem to me so many times, he doesn't even try to keep his distance from people like us. He comes close to you. He comes close to you with his body and his blood. The blood of the new covenant that he keeps, the forgiveness of all our sins. This is the special meal that Jesus invites you and me to this evening. This is the quiet room that Jesus has prepared. He's done everything. There's not a thing that we can do to make his holy supper more powerful or more ready or more effective. It's all him. The food is ready. The drink is ready because by his power and his promise, he says, this is my body. Take and eat. This is my blood, take and drink. Tonight, I serve you. Tonight, I strengthen you for the struggles and the challenges of tomorrow. This is the meal I eagerly desire you to eat with me. And he has the power to be able to invite you and me individually and yet also all together. Here we enjoy this blessed communion with him and with one another. Those around you, we might often forget, are your forgiven brothers and sisters of Christ. Fighting battles you might never know about. Facing the same enemies. Needing the same strength from God and receiving the same forgiveness from him. If Jesus, the perfect son of God, in the flesh desired fellowship with his people, how much more reason do we have to treasure it? 
if this life is a courtroom where the world puts God and his people on trial, then this moment is a moment of respite from all of it. Jesus invites you to a quiet room where there are no accusations, no prosecutors, no false witnesses, only blessed assurance and promises of a final victory. How eagerly we desire to eat this meal. Tonight and every time it's offered, as often as we are able, until he calls us home or until he returns, because by his grace for this moment, here we are in the presence of God. Here we are surrounded by his people that are washed clean and called his own. And here we have a taste, a small taste of the respite we will finally have in heaven. Amen. I invite you, invite you to join together with me and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I thank God to be able to share. Oh, excuse me. I thank God to be able to share this special message with you today. God bless and keep you. This is a most, my, my, my favorite time of the church here this Holy Week. It's not that we're hearing a different word of God, but it's so focused on his great love for us that he was willing to do this for us and so close to celebrating his resurrection to life again on Easter morning. God give you his peace today, dear Christian. And Lord willing, I'll see you real soon.